Well, welcome you to friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. Y'all, I did it. I broke my ring light for good. <laughs> Actually, the ring light is fine. It is the piece that holds your recording device. Um, I like to use my phone. I'm just going to be honest. Even though my son bought me an amazing camera, I'm always out of memory. I'm always out of battery. <laughs> okay, so there's that. But when I stretched it to put my phone in, yeah, I broke it. So I was in total despair with it being no to spend January. And then I remembered I have my Foo Fly. <laughs> it's actually called a Foo Fly brand. Um, tripod, that's what it is. That has a different mounting, what they call a shoe. The things you learn when you break things. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah. I'll um, have to break down and order one. You know, there's a few things, y'all, during any type of low spend or no spend month. You have to be realistic. And I will share some exciting news with you. I have a couple of really cool things coming up. One is I finished my products for the hotel. Thank you, Grace, if you're watching. And so she'll be picking those up first of the week. So that's really exciting. I didn't need to purchase anything. I had enough um, ingredients and supplies on hand. But one of my friends who is very like-minded as far as um, growing your own food. <laughs> we didn't even know it, but we each got chickens um, kind of at the same time. And she meets, she's a younger mother. She's much younger than me. I think she's younger than my kid. But she meets with a group of ladies who are also very like-minded. And the topic came up about learning to make soap. So I'm going to be doing, at the end of February, a class for seven ladies here at the house, teaching them how to make goat's milk soap. Now, I probably won't video it for their privacy. And just seven people making soap for the first time is going to be like, a whole thing, but I am so excited and it's an opportunity for me to meet new people. You know, unless y'all think I don't have friends, I do have friends, but you know, living so far out away from a lot of my former friends or my friends that don't happen to live in this area, I find that I don't get out and do things as much. And I also am not a person that likes to eat out because of my soy allergy intolerance, whatever you want to call it. Okay, enough about me. So this has been kind of a, a whole morning. So first I broke my ring light phone holder. I did think about duct tape, y'all. I really did. And mm, mm, I kind of think it might work. Then my iron, which has been a wonderful iron, and I will link it below. I must not have let it get hot enough before I started using it. So it vomited water all over my fabric and I'm like come on now <laughs> I just want to teach the people so what are we doing today y'all I can't wait to share it so we're going to be doing two things and y'all I apologize ahead of time sometimes my videos are an hour um I can't help it sometimes I have a lot to say oh let me get off my legs here now I'm going to forewarn y'all you're probably going to bobble like, I don't even know. I don't even remember how to use this thing. If I'm kind of looking like this, y'all just tell your head. <laughs> First thing, well, we're going to do two things. We're going to be making a canning mat. And we're going to be making this Valentine-appropriate uh, heart hot mitt or hot pad. Now, I might have sounded kind of snarky, y'all. So let me just put this out here. I apologize. Um... There are large companies that have YouTube channels and they trademark their products. Many, but not all of these companies have teams of people who do nothing on their social media, but look for ways to claim a copyright violation. Now y'all, I was so aggravated about this because I contested it and I did not win. Y you usually don't. Um, I mean, YouTube can't be expected to get in the middle of everything. But I'm here to tell you today, this is my design. I'm going to do it. I am going to use a heart pattern and I'll share where I got it off the internet, but you can draw your own. All right. 
So I really like this. It's a little bit different. I did go out and peruse Pinterest to see, okay, what's new and exciting. Some of the new ones, instead of having the V shape for the hand, it's just straight up and down. So that's different. And a lot of them are not finished on the inside. So um, I highly recommend the method that I'm going to use. I think it's super easy. If you can sew a straight line or a curve, you know, turn and curve line, you can do this. It is not hard. What you will need is two kinds of fabric, or you can do it all in one. I I picked out like 17 fabric <laughs> before I settled. Um, Walmart. You can buy these one yards. This is Waverly. I found these to be good fabrics. And yeah, you guys, I like I like cherries and strawberries. I like all that. And then I had this bigger polka dot. So that would be cute. I tend to go to darker colors for hot mitts because I go through them at an alarming rate. I burn holes in them, <laughs> get them stained. Um, the other idea that I have, but I decided this would be a cuter canning mat. I do not have a ketchup and mustard one. Um, this is the ketchup and mustard fabric. This, I, it came from Joanne. It's marked a Joanne design. I've probably had it two years, so I don't know if they still make it. And then just a multi polka dot. Would that not be cute? But then I'm like, ooh, step away from the white. <laughs> Y'all, I, I don't mean to be messy, but I just end up being messy. Okay, so we're gonna do this. But if I'm gonna, I'm sitting in the floor and y'all just pretend all this background noise isn't there. I need to clean my craft room again, just saying. It's, it stayed really pretty well. I've gotta give myself credit. The other thing is, I wanna teach y'all how to do a canning mat. Now, do I sell canning mats? Yes, yes I have. Do I sell the double-ended hot mitts, which I'm not gonna show? I do. But just to be fair, 2022 was a year that I really concentrated on getting chickens, expanding my garden, and then I had the whole move my mother thing, which, and sell her house and auction her stuff. So I didn't get to sewing um, like I normally do. So I thought, why not teach y'all? I mean, it's not like a super secret and it's so easy. I'm telling you, if you don't know how to sew, but you can operate your sewing machine, you can make this. So I actually have two that I brought in. You've all seen me can. Um, the first one is my favorite from looks. I do have the double-ended matching hot mitt. It is the chicken and egg, and then the back is just the egg. I really like the look of this on my countertop. I think it's super cute, but in practical, practical, practicality, okay, being practical, I don't wanna get it dirty. <laughs> so I usually only put jars that are coming out of the canner on it. My go-to, Oh my word, there's a little bit of a, I must not have washed this one yet. <laughs> my go-to is this. So it is the canning fruit and vegetable fabric. Uh, that I think I got at Hobby Lobby in just a little polka dot. The reason I like this is as you're filling jars, you can do this side and stains don't really show. But y'all probably aren't as messy as I am. <laughs> but one thing I did notice, I was like, wait, I have a book that I keep all of my measurements and such in, but I'm like, these two are totally different. Well, I can tell you the reason probably is I didn't have enough of this fabric, but I really like this. So let me grab a tape measure here. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The old gray mare mm -hmm. in what she used to be. Can't get up as easily as I used to. Let me hitch up my pants. Y'all, let me brag on myself for just a minute. I really need to get some weight off because excess weight on uh, joints with psoriatic arthritis and a bad back is probably like one of the worst things you can do. So I'm down a size in pants and I'm so, <laughs> I'm so happy. I used to call these my punishment pants because they were way, way, way too small. And I got them on with relative ease today. So I'm not real hung up with, on numbers. So I can't really even tell you what I weigh, but I've definitely lost weight. So the finished size of the, get the right end, of the fruit and veggie mat is 15 
by 26. So you would cut it 16 by 27. You know what, y'all, let's write that down. And then the standard size that I've done for many of you who've ordered the finished size, why can I not get the right end of the thing? It's gonna be one of them days. Is, yeah, 24, 19 by 24. So it'd be 20 by 25 cut out. So you do need to cut it one inch bigger. Sorry guys, you probably don't wanna see my gut. Um, then what you want your finished size to be because we're gonna sew it together using um, a half inch seam. Had to think about that for a minute. We're gonna turn it so it's gonna end up an inch smaller on both dimensions. Okay, I'm sure y'all know that. But you can make it any size you want, y'all. You don't have enough fabric, make it longer and skinnier. That's really nice for lining up your jars. If your, pardon me, countertops are not as deep I am so sorry, y'all. Um, change it up. So, let me see if I can do this, y'all. Yeah, and do, do, don't look up there. This is a lot of the things I took from my mom's that I still haven't gone through. Um, okay, let me, let me see, okay. All right. So the fabric that I've chosen is like this shiplapish color and then I also chose, and yeah, you can still see the wet spots, this teal dot or blue, sky blue dot. This matches my kitchen. And I'm gonna actually be using this for both. And y'all, since this fell off the chair, I'm working on, and thank you for whoever told me this was called Jelly Roll. Some of the Jelly Roll strips, the lighting doesn't do it justice. It's all pinks and purples with a little bit of blue mixed in. The back is like a blue and pink floral. I have it all put together. This is a table runner for my island. I just need to quilt it. So, and someone also asked, can I show the loom back here? Y'all, I haven't done anything on the loom for a while, but I will put, I have put it on my list. The list, it's on the list. All right, so what I have down here is one of these hard cutting mats. Now, a lot of you probably have like a real lovely cutting table. Yeah, I just get on the floor. It's not as easy as it used to be. And it is a good idea to pre-wash and dry your fabric, then you don't have to deal with any shrinkage. So you may notice some raveling along the edge. This is the selvage or finished edge, so it is not raveled. Um, but that's okay, we can cut that off. So, I like to use one of these plastic, I'm trying to see if, this is a Fiskars rulers. And it has a lot of different like angles you can do, etc., etc. But there are also measurements on the board, but I like to use the ruler and then use a rotary cutter. Now there's a couple sizes. These are both Fiskars. This was the first one I ever had. This is the second. Just be really careful with them, guys. So let's get started here. And I think I'm gonna do a skinny one because this one is gonna be a little bit more for show than for, um, actually using to dish up things just because I think it'll show stains. So I'm going to do the 16 by 27 and this is definitely um, a pattern that will show if you get it crooked so I'm just lining up the stripes and what I like to do and guys there is a glove thingy my bobber that you can use that will protect your hand. I don't have one. So, all right. So there's just a little lever here that pops out the titanium blade. And I'm just going to make sure that I'm lined up. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut it
and then I know this isn't going to be 27 inches. So make sure you're keeping everything level. And I always pre-iron my fabric. Okay, where where was I? Okay, right there. Sometimes you'll get little strings too. All right, so. 27 is about at the two mark. So we'll go a little past that because I do need to cut off the raw edge. Okay. It's that easy, guys. So you can, you know, lay it out, measure it out, cut it, but I just think the rotary cutter makes things faster. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my two 16 by 27 pieces. Then we'll talk about the type of batting or insulated batting that you need to use for cutting mat. I hope you'll stay tuned. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna just leave the camera at this angle. I know it's a little strange. What I like using is Insul Bright. I purchased this at Hobby Lobby when they have their 30% off coupon and you can get the 30% off an entire bolt. So I usually buy it by the bolt. It's made by the Warm Company. It is good for coats, jackets, vests, ski apparel, gloves and mittens, bedding projects, home comfort and creative projects like hot mats, oven mitts, tea cozy casserole covers, lunch bags, place mats, table runners. So Insel Bright is made of polyester fibers needle punched through a non-woven substrate and through a reflective metallized film. The needled material breathes and won't break down by from washing. And I can attest to that, y'all. You know, if you've ever had an older quilt, how to bunch up some of the cotton batting will do that. The fiber resists conduction while the reflective material metallized, excuse me, film resists radiant energy. The energy, hot or cold, is reflected back to the source. So I like using this when I'm bringing those screaming hot jars out of the canner. Number one, to prevent thermal shock. So even if you have, like I do, a laminate countertop, the temperature of that compared to the temperature of the jar is vastly different. So this kind of cozies it up and instead of it pulling the heat rapidly away, it will reflect it back to the jar, not into your laminate countertop or onto your granite or whatever material you have. I am a huge believer in this. There are probably other brands. I have just always used this brand. And y'all, let me show you. They even have, I just saved the directions, but they even have a hot mitt pattern that, with directions. So we're not gonna be using that. So the paper is through the entire thing. Now, let me see if I can remember the dimensions of it. Uh, hee -ho, hee -hee. No. <laughs> let me get the width for you all. So it is 22 inches wide. So that has been like the limit when I'm doing a canning mat of of one of the dimensions. So let me look again at what we're using. We're using 16 by 27. So we'll have a little bit of waste. I will tell you this is a little bit harder to cut with a rotary blade. So let me go ahead and cut this piece out I will give everything another press because I've just kind of thrown the fabric over here. And then we are gonna start making the canning mat first because it's super simple. And then we'll get into the nitty gritty of the, um, yeah, this thing, <laughs> the heart shaped mitt. Words are hard on some days for me, y'all. I, I, I've kind of had one of those weird days where everything I've touched has not gone as planned, but I'm determined, so here we go. 
one of the questions you may have as you look at the Inselbright fabric is which is the right side and which is the wrong side. This is what's on the outside. This is the wrong side. But since it's encased and I use both sides of the mat, I don't think it really matters. So, I should get in my up and down movements for the day. So I have everything cut and pressed. And here's what you want to do. So lay one of your fabrics face up. Now, ask me how I know this. I have goofed this up before. Lay your second fabric exactly on top, face down. So we have right sides together. And I do find that using the ruler and the rotary cutter help me to get more even cuts. When you're working with large pieces of fabric, sometimes they're not 100% exact, but they're usually pretty close. All right, next, you wanna layer in your Inselbright. So when you turn this, we are going to be turning so that the insole bright is on the inside, like this, all right? You do need to leave an area open for turning. So just get the sides as even as you can. I'm gonna go ahead and pin all the way around. I have a couple pins that are a different color. I do use glass head quilting pins because they're easier for my fumbly hands. So I have a couple that are teal. I'll start there and go ahead and mark because I know to stop sewing at the teal pins and leave this open for turning. Now, how many inches is that? Oh, one, two, three, four, five, five, six inches open for turning is adequate. So let me go ahead and pin this. I will meet y'all over at the sewing machine and I'll show you just how easy it is in a very small amount of time to create a canning mat. Now, a question I'm probably gonna get and I can't answer right now because I bought um, bolts of Inselbright when I was doing so much sewing for others. You're gonna ask me how much it is and I honestly don't know. The second question you might have is, well, can I just use uh, caught in batting? I would say use two layers if you're going to do that, but don't expect the same reflective quality. I have made a couple using a layer of each. To me, they just are really bulky and I didn't notice any benefit. It's just an added expense. So let me finish pinning. I will meet you over at the sewing machine. So this angle's a little bit weird, y'all, but the configuration of this room doesn't allow me to set up my foo fly <laughs> on the other side. So I'll have to figure something out. But this is so simple, you really don't need to watch me sew. So now that we have everything pinned together, I'm going to start at one of my teal pens um, on the side. I don't like starting on corners. I think corners come out better if you sew along and pivot at the corner. So using a half inch seam allowance is where we're gonna start here. And I'm just going to straight stitch along. Now, I do highly recommend that you back stitch well at the beginning and end of the opening because you're gonna be putting some pressure on the material on your stitching when you go to turn it. So let me just sew up to the corner and pivot and then I'll go ahead and finish it up off camera. I'm amazed at the number of you who sew as well. I've gotten so much, uh, you know, really enthusiastic comments about this project so I'm glad y'all are excited and I hope you all will enjoy the hot mitt. I was only going to do the hot mitt but then I was like mm, I kind of did promise that I was going to do both. 
So, all right, we're coming up to the corner here. Oh, uh, how about that? I've never had that happen before. My needle fell out. I told y'all, having one of those days, but it didn't even come un pinned so i mean unthreaded so yeah we just gonna pretend that didn't happen all right go ahead and pick up your whole project piece turn it line it up on the half inch mark and continue sewing all the way around back back stitching at the end opening i'll bring you back then something i did fail to mention is it's a lot easier to sew on the fabric side than it is on the insole bright side and if you have a dual feed feature on your machine, definitely use the dual feed. The insole bright kind of has a tendency to stretch. So once I finished sewing, I went ahead and I trimmed down my seams so that all the fabrics were even. And then I clipped the corners close to the stitching just to eliminate some of the bulk. So you want to reach in and start turning all of your fabric right side out and you're going to reach between the two fabrics that you did. So as you can see it gets kind of wrinkledy. Now, my favorite utensil for turning is actually a spatula. Uh, I just think it works really really well but you can also use a ruler or non-sharp scissors. So what you're aiming to do is really pull out those corners so that they don't end up super rounded, you know, so they're a little bit sharper. They're not gonna be 100% sharp just because of the bulk in the corners of three fabrics sewn together. So I'm just popping my finger into the corners to start. And yeah, it's a little bit of fiddling, but honestly, y'all, I think the hardest part of this is cutting it all out. So here's what it's gonna look like. And y'all, I apologize about the angles, not so good. So I'm gonna take my ruler, and this is just a metal ruler, and I'm gonna go up into my corners, and hopefully you can see, I'm just kind of running it along the seam so that we have nice, sharp seam lines. Switch hands here. And then let me fish out the ruler and I'm just using, this is actually a cork backed, the pencil grip ruler. Probably something that came from Walmart. <laughs> so I like to take my scissors and gently and these are not super pointy scissors. Gently go up in your corners like this. It eliminates that bulk and it keeps you from having just a rounded corner. If you like rounded corners, that's fine too. I just think it looks a little more finished or a little more professional. And that's just my personal preference, y'all. That doesn't mean I'm right and you're wrong. All right. So we popped out our four corners, and now I'm going to start working on ironing this or pressing. So you do want to make sure that your reverse fabric isn't showing, so you want your seam right at the edge. And then, please don't vomit. Now, I don't know what was up with the iron other than, wow, that gets really hot then I just didn't have it hot enough and got impatient. <clears throat> That'd be me. <laughs> Ouch. Try not to burn yourself. Now, I know you all know how to iron, so let me just show you. When you get to the area that you left open to turn, you just wanna turn those edges in and they'll naturally want to turn in at your seam allowance turn them in and we are going to actually be top stitching this so that opening will be sewn up so you don't have to do any hand sewing you can sew it up by hand if you prefer but the top stitching really helps all your layers ouch that's hot to come together nicely i need to grab some pins here 
and I'm just gonna pin this area. And the reason I like to pin it, y'all that iron's hot, <laughs> is that way when I get to that area, I make sure and pay special attention because you definitely want to be catching those raw edges in so you don't end up with an area that unravels. So I'm gonna finish ironing. I'll take you back to the machine. I'm gonna change threads to a kind of a teal blue color and we'll finish up the top stitching and be on to our next project. Stay tuned. So for the top stitching portion, I like to sew about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Again, I don't start at the corners only because I think you can make better corners without having back stitching or fixing, which some machines have a fixed stitch, which is a knot stitch. So I'm gonna sew all the way around. I am going to use that pretty blue uh, thread. And then I will take out my pins, give it a final press, and show you the final product before we start on our heart, heart, hot mitt. Stay tuned. Our very, very cute canning mat is all finished. How lovely did that turn out? I really like the blue top stitching, and I think the top stitching just adds a little something. So let's say you don't want a top stitch, as long as you sew up by hand, your turning edge, you know, you're good. I think the top stitching helps the mat to stay crisper. And when you wash it, it doesn't slide, the layers don't slide as much. So it's a lot easier to um, just snap it like this. I hang mine to dry, but I have put them in the dryer in a pinch and they're totally, totally washable and dryable. All right, I'm gonna, Take a real quick break, get reorganized, get some items cut out so that y'all don't have to watch me cut. I just thought it was nice to show you how I cut out the canning mats so they come out nice and even. And then we'll get to make in our heart-shaped hot mitt. Stay tuned. All right, on to project two. Had to get a little glass of tea to get me pepped up here. And I did take the... Um, canning mat downstairs because I thought, well, I'll put it on the counter, you know, for the thumbnail. And Frankie's like, is this for me, <laughs> mom? Like he was on it like flies on rice, we'll say. All right. So you can use any heart template that you want. If y'all forget how to do a heart, fold the paper in half. You can draw one. I actually am going to use spoonful of sugars free template download. So if it's proprietary, it's only the shape of the heart. And what I'm going to cut out is two full hearts, because this is put on the fold line, of one fabric, two full hearts of another fabric, a small piece for the hanging loop, and two strips to bind the edges of the heart here. And you can use the same fabric, a contrasting fabric. Now, you have some options. You can not quilt this. That's probably the easiest option. I prefer it quilted. I think it makes for a nicer product. I'm going to quilt my fabric. You can also purchase fabric. Y'all, let me show you this. That is already quilted. Uh, where did I put it? Ooh, this would be a nice one. So I actually made a bathrobe out of this. Is this like 60s fab? So it's pre-quilted fabric, already black on one side. Um, quilted on the other. You know what? Well, for the sake of teaching, I guess I won't use this, but mm, might, might have to make me one of those because that'll make it a lot faster. So you may be thinking, uh-oh, I don't quilt. Y'all, you don't have to be like a quilting bee quilter to do this. So what I've done is I decided a 16 inch by 20 inch fabric piece with Insel Bright cut to the same size will give me two hearts of each fabric plus a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to stitch and again, I'm going to go from the fabric side, not the Insel Bright side. I'm going to stitch 
lines mm, inch or so apart one direction i'm going to turn the fabric stitch them an inch apart on the other side i prefer to pre-quilt my fabric before i cut it out then you don't end up with shifting fabric or problems that way or puckering that alters the size of your heart so either use pre-quilted fabric don't quilt or quilt your fabric then cut out the hearts so i'm going to get busy quilting it will take me a while y'all i got a late start today so i hope this video goes up tomorrow as promised or it might be late but anyway i'm going to get busy quilting and then i'll bring you back we'll cut out and assemble which is the easy part stay tuned all right y'all i have fully quilted you can see it better on this side one of the 16 by 20 pieces of fabric. And I will tell you, it takes a long time. It was easier because I did have the stripes to kind of line up, but it isn't 100% perfect, but I think that adds to the charm. Now, I am going to be using this for the back and the inside of the heart, but the two pieces that are partial heart pieces I actually thought, you know, this may be unapproachable for some of you, um, depending on your machine. You know, this may be just too much sewing and quilting. So I'm going to change up and we're going to cut out the pre-quilted fabric. Then we're going to cut out non-quilted fabric and I will show you how you can quilt it. Um, it's a little bit easier on the smaller pieces than the whole heart. I wanted this to be a bit more uniform. So let me take you over to the cutting board and we'll get to cutting out our heart shapes. Stay tuned. Okay, y'all. Again, I'm using the Spoonful of Sugar Heart Pattern. And this is a cut on the fold pattern. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut all this off where the fold would be. So I don't have to guesstimate with all this extra paper. I do enough of that in my sewing. <laughs> All right. Now, the next decision you'll have to make, where, oh, it's over there, is do I want my stripes vertical or do I want them horizontal? Um, I really don't care. So I think what I might do is I'm going to fold it here right on one of my quilting lines and you can see here where I quilted make sure that is large enough maybe just a touch bigger I just don't want my stripes to be wonky <laughs> so let me see okay that works so you want to go ahead and pin it down. Again, placing, if you drew your own heart, you may have to cut around a whole heart. Um, it's pretty easy to do it on the fold. And one of the reasons I like doing it on the fold is I feel like your uh, the symmetry of your heart comes out better, especially up in here. So if you're brand new to sewing and you're like, oh yeah, I'm not quilting. <laughs> Another option is you'll see on the pattern here, they just have these lines. They cut out all the pieces and they just quilt it on those heart lines instead of using totally quilted fabric. And that works too. Or easier yet, buy the pre-quilted fabric, which... About halfway through this, I'm like, why am I quilting this all? But, you know, that's also fun too. Sewing should be fun. And I like practical projects too. So let's go ahead and I'm going to cut this out. You're going to be using a quarter inch seam. And that is marked actually on this one. One of the things you will notice about Inselbright is it's a little bit harder to cut than definitely quilt batting or regular fabric. But y'all, I am so impressed with that product, the durability, the washability, and how much protection it gives your hands as well. So, 
if you're using plain quilt batting, I make no guarantees about the protection it will give your hands. Um, I'm sure you would need multiple layers. So let's see what our heart looks like, y'all. Just pulling out the pins. How stunning is that? Even though my quilt lines aren't perfect, yeah, it works, right? Okay, so let's fold the side. And please be big enough, yes. And again, I'm just trying to keep my stripes straight. And that's a me thing, y'all. It would have been cute even on the diagonal. I would say also when you're choosing your fabric, maybe don't pick an obvious uh, directional pattern. If you're um, new to sewing or you don't want to have to be fussy about it. Y'all, I apologize more than y'all know about the weird angles, the poor lighting. <laughs> Um, I started to tell you and I got sidetracked. So I was like, well, you know, I promised myself at the start of this if I needed something for my business. And I don't really consider YouTube my business, but it's very important to me. And I like to keep my promises to people. I thought, you know, I just, I'm, I'm going to need to order it. So I was going to get a whole new ring light. And then I'm like, no way, I can just get the piece I broke. <laughs> and... I found one that was $12 that looks like it has pretty good reviews and it had a 5% off coupon. And when I went to check out, I had credits um, sitting in Amazon because I do use uh, an Amazon Prime credit card and I pay, I know this is really weird, I pay my Amazon bill once a week so I'm never surprised. I would prefer not to have the credit card, but because you get 5% back on all your purchases, it's like getting a 5% discount on everything. So I am very blessed to report that it didn't cost me a penny, except of course my credits, and it will be here Sunday. So my Amazon deliveries are late, late, late in the day. So I decided I could not wait because this is already Friday and I promised you this video on Saturday. All right, are you ready for the big reveal? Y'all, that is super cute. Yeah, I really like it. Okay, so when we get ready to cut these pieces, so this is the half heart. We can actually use this template, but I am going to cut it so that I have that space for my hand. So probably the easiest way to do that is probably just to fold it. But um, yeah, so I have went ahead and actually pinned together the fabric I needed to do the pocket, we'll call it. And I'm going to need four of them. So let's just do it the same way. This, of course, does not lay as flat because it isn't quilted. I can tell that it's not big enough. And this is a polka dot fabric, but it's random enough. I don't think I have to be... Well, I'll get the right piece of paper, Kim. Too crazy about how I line it up. So I'm going to go ahead and cut I don't need that on the fold. I need four individual pieces. I'm going to cut four of these. And I think I'm going to go ahead and angle that off. So let me grab a ruler and a pencil. And I'm going to just start at the point here. I printed two of these so I could do this. And yeah, we're just going to do that. <laughs> if anybody tries to say that I stole their pattern or their um, 
design. Y'all be my witnesses, right? Okay, so let's cut out four of those. I'm, I'm just going to pin it down, cut it out, and then we'll get to assembling, which is the easiest part. <laughs> the longest part is the quilting and, um, you know, just getting all the pieces cut out. So stay tuned for that. Okay, y'all. You actually have some options at this point, and I'm glad that I thought this through a little differently. So my original thought was to take, let's just say this is one side, one pocket, was to quilt each of these and then stitch them together. However, y'all look how thick that is. That's quite the sandwich. So I went back to my prototype, which because I made it up and didn't copy it, I don't have the directions for. And I can tell you that this is two layers of fabric, one layer of insubrite. So what I'm going to do, I'm, I haven't wasted anything because mm, I can make another one if I ever do this again. So what I decided to do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to quilt this. Now, you may be like, ugh, I don't really know how to do it. You could do it uh, horizontally and vertically, or you can do it on the diagonal, which I think is really easy. So if you don't have, like I have two machines. My other machine has a quilting arm that comes out that will help you mark, like you set it for how far apart your Pardon me, stitch lines are. But if you don't have that, what you can do, you guys, I'm sorry, of course I have the hiccups. This is like the worst video I've ever done. You take one of these heat erasable pins so you can mark right on it. You can use chalk. I'll tell you another thing that works is little slivers of soap and it will disappear when you iron it. In a, a these are called hem gauges, but some kind of a measuring gauge where you can mark it. I can eyeball it to a degree, but it's not perfect. But that I will fully admit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and pin this section together. And again, all these edges are gonna be hidden by the time we finish. So it it isn't gonna have any raw edges because this will be sewn into the heart and then we're gonna turn the whole thing. So let me just kind of pin this together so that we can at least get started on a straight line. And make sure, guys, turn it over. Make sure your pins aren't bunching up. I think that's the biggest reason I like to pre-quilt my fabric and then cut it out because you don't have to fuss with it. But the more I thought about it, I thought, you know, that that is a lot to ask of people. And <laughs> they may not want to do it that way. So there, here I'm giving you all the different ways. All right. This is going to be so cute, y'all. So what it's going to look like, just to give you an idea where we're going with it, it's going to be like this. I know it's not lined up properly. But I'm going to sew, we are going to sew a little binding on there so it won't be raw edges. So because this is horizontal and vertical, I think I'm going to do this one on the diagonal. To me, diagonal quilting is a little bit easier. So I am just going to do about, mm, about an inch apart each sewing line. I'm going to go ahead and quilt up these pieces, and then we'll come back, make our binding for the edge of the pockets, make our loop. Those are really simple things. We'll sew it together and we'll be done. And this won't be the longest video in history. <laughs> All right, guys, stay tuned. Okay, we have our quilted on the diagonal pocket. And in addition, I've made two strips and turned them, as well as a loop that will eventually hang up the hot mitt. And I made the loop a little fatter because this is a much larger piece than the previous one that I made. What I'm going to do here is I am going to sew this down and I'm going to turn it and sew it again, top stitch it so that I have finished 
this edge and then we will be ready to assemble. All right, y'all. So we finished up our raw edge here. I still have a lot of threads to trim. So what you want to do is place right side up the what will be the inside of the heart, then your two pocket pieces. You want to go ahead and pin your uh, loop actually in between these two layers. I just put it here so I would remember to tell you. Then we'll sandwich this all in like this. We'll leave an opening for turning. I don't recommend that you leave it on the curve, leave it on one of the easier curves. We're gonna sew it all together, turn it, and press it. So let me take you over to the machine. All right, y'all. We're at the home stretch. So I have everything pinned together in the order I suggested. So we have a nice sandwich. Don't forget the loop goes between the first layer and the two pockets. So I've put my two teal color pins here. I'm going to start and I am going to use a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to start here at the start of the turning point to make sure that I back stitch really well. I'm just going to go around the whole heart, leaving that opening I left about that much, <laughs> about three inches. Then I'll turn it, I'll press it, and I'll bring you back to show you what it looks like before we do our final top stitch. I apologize again about the poor lighting and that this has taken half of forever. <laughs> but we're going to get there, guys. I'm determined. By now, y'all might be thinking, I think I'll just go to Walmart and buy a hot mitt. <laughs> oh, y'all, it's so worth it. It turns out nicer than anything you can buy. You ready for the big reveal? Now, I still have pins in because we have to top stitch. How darling did this come out? So well made. So, um... The one thing I am going to do is I am going to top stitch. To, you could sew this by hand, but, you know, think about a hot mitt. It gets a lot of um, exercise, and then it goes through the washer and dryer a lot. So I'm going to sew very, very close to the edge, like at about an eighth of an inch from the edge, just to make sure I catch all those edges. Then if you want to do a second row, like a quarter of an inch away from that, you certainly can. So let me top stitch, do a final pressing. Then I'm going to get in better lighting, give myself something to eat because y'all, it's 1.30 and I haven't had lunch yet. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to finish this. <laughs> All right, stay tuned. Y'all, thanks for coming along today for our trip on the struggle bus. <laughs> Actually, these projects, of course, the canning mat, are they're very, very simple. I just had a little bit of trouble with the amount of time that it was taking which is normally not a problem you should enjoy your sewing but look at our beautiful canning mat um hello matches the blue of my kitchen but my pride and joy y'all this is the previous mitt that i had made and just to show you how much mm, this is my original this is just bigger but it kind of looks the same does it not I am super pleased with the quilting. I think it just came out so lovely. It is nice and thick, y'all. I love that it's thick and protective and it's gonna look pretty hanging up on my fridge. So again, thank you for taking all the time to watch me. I will have, I will be back in business on my lighting. Lighting. I didn't even try for the microphone today, so I hope y'all can hear me because I'm wondering, is this just too much? <laughs> Sometimes the microphone gives me struggles as well. We finally are not having snow. We had five inches, eight inches, then five inches, then three inches, but we've had some melting in between. And today, um, it is supposed to be in the low 40s. I have no idea what what the temperature is. I know it's very windy. It's 33, so we haven't even made it to the 40s. But let me tell y'all, I'm getting three and four eggs a day from my girly girls. So they, of course, they're young hens, but um, they're like, what, 
like a year old, but still, I'm very proud of them and they're well fed and well loved. They really miss their mom I'm not being out there more, but let me tell y'all, it's been so miserable. I'm so grateful for muck boots. <laughs> So grateful. So I will see you all next week with better equipment. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing next week. I have a list of about, I don't know, 800 things I want to do. I know not everyone sews, but I hope this gives you an appreciation, if you're not a seamstress, of the love that goes into handmade gifts because I always appreciate something handmade because I know firsthand the time energy and effort that goes into it so drop me a comment below are you going to make yourself a, a valentine hot mitt i hope so are you going to use pre-quilted fabric or are you going to quilt it yourself <laughs> y'all i left out the pre-quilted fabric because i'm like that would be so much easier um so you might see that in a later video so I will see you again on Saturday. Don't forget to smash that like button, y'all. I so appreciate each and every one of you taking time from your day. Your time is valuable. I hope you find benefit from my videos. And until I see you again, y'all take care of yourself. Stay away from those germs. Take care of each other. Be healthy, be well, be blessed.